project I've constructed for Rapid Prototype 2. Uh, we have named it Millennium 1.4 and it is the fourth construction of a city that is mentioned in a play we're working on. Um, of a script that is half original dialogue and half what we would call massive fantasy novel style backstory. Uh, both Lucy and I, Lucy Watson who I'm working with on the project grew extremely attached to the backstory and wanted to figure out a way to insert it into a theatre environment so you would become just as attached to it. So what we've devised is a city from obsolete computer parts and speakers that when you press particular sensors it starts to tell you stories about itself uh, and it's only through interaction that you can discover these parts of stories. Eventually we're hoping that after that you would then get to go and watch the play that the stories are about and you would sit there and go oh my god I know where that's from I got to visit that in the city and it creates a bit more of a connection through it and I really love the idea of just getting an audience to play with something instead of asking them to think about it. Strange sound to it, and I got um, I was trying to find ways I can create that sound other than digitally because I came to the conclusion that anything is possible in my studio and in my computer. So I've been um, this whole year I spent trying to create some sort of solo aesthetic, which I felt I hadn't done beforehand. So um, I created a, a few installations, and uh, one of them, the first one was this giant sort of monolith based on 2001, and this is kind of development from that. Um, I want to kind of recreate the Finnish forest using very alien sort of structures and uh, I really like the shape of a kind of pulled apart washing machine or clothes dryer and uh, once I sort of turn them into this kind of speaker the whole thing kind of shapes this weird metallic strange noise that you can't sort of quite place uh, a nice really strange echo. <laughs> Last year in May, I was commissioned by the Red Room Company to write a poem about Wayside Chapel. And so what I did is I went to Wayside Chapel and I took my Zoom recorder and I recorded myself having conversations with four people. And um, then I transcribed those conversations and I took the transcript and I cut it up and made this um, shape out of it, a big poem out of it. And so what we have here is we have like a picture which is um, the representation of that shape. Um, and then we have the actual column over here which you can navigate. And what you do is you start at the top of the shape. So it's kind of like a pyramid in a way, or like kind of making an imaginative chapel in the sky built out of these people's imaginations. And you start at the top of the pyramid and you work your way down. So it's kind of like when you meet someone for the first time, you might just hear a word or notice a thing and you gradually get to know them more and more.
my name's Evan Clulo. My partner's um, Mark Forrester, and together we've formed a band, a musical act called Clulo Forrester. Um, with the live show, our main policy was to be able to improvise, bring risk into our performance, and make it physical so people can see what we're doing and, and hopefully hear it. The exciting thing is Mark's reactable. It took him about three, two to three years to build and um, get working. Um, it uses a bunch of software that turns, um, and cameras that turn shapes and images in, into numbers and then they get transformed into sound and visuals. I got a bunch of artists together um, from different backgrounds, poetry, spoken word, music, um, audio, sort of experimental, time-based stuff, um, filmmakers, you get the drift. And I asked them all to create a short mp3, um, whatever they wanted really, so I got a whole bunch of stuff and created a timeline so that um, I could fill the space of the dreamscape. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you.